Uh, prior to 10 years ago, most Negroes associated or identified Africa with a savage, jungle-like place. And whenever you mentioned the word African in their mind's eye, they could see the image of a, someone running around with a spear, uh, with no language, who'd say ugga bugga boo or buana or something, and uh, who'd be in a jungle running from lions or chasing lions. But then when, uh, after the war, when the United Nations was set up in New York City, uh, black people began to look at uh, uh, men like Tom M. Boyer. They began to look at men like uh, Nkrumah. They began to see men like Lumumba. They began to see men like Nasser. They began to see uh, these uh, Belawa and Azikwe who could uh, exchange intellectually with whites on an international level in a political form and hold their own. This made the black people in this country realize that what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had been teaching all the time actually had substance. And they began to turn it over in their mind and see that what he was saying had more weight to it than what these other Negroes were saying. And they began to identify themselves with the black world and the black struggle more uh, closely than they identified themselves with this so-called white world. Let me ask you a question with respect to a statement which Essien Yudum quotes as being on a bulletin board in the University of Islam in Chicago by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. According to Essien, Mr. Muhammad states, up you mighty race, you can accomplish what you will. Build your future on these foundations, freedom, justice, and equality. What is the definition of freedom, justice, and equality for the black man, and where and when is it to be attained? Well, take equality first. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad doesn't teach us to uh, associate equality with whites. Equality has nothing to do with whites. We, want e we don't want to be equal with the white man. He's not the criteria or yardstick by which equality is measured. He's not in a position to tell us we are equal. It's not his right, it's not his to do. Equality, we want equality. We had equality before the white man was created. We had, the, we had equality before the white man came into existence. And we want equality whether the white man is on this earth or not. Equality means the uh, opportunity to develop all of our dormant potential, all, all of our dormant capability. And, and, and uh, in developing this dormant uh, capability, the right and the ability to stand on this earth on some land uh, of our own and bring about a civilization and a society in, we will, in which we will be completely independent, complete freedom to uh, uh, take care of the needs, to take care of the uh, wants and the likes and the dislikes of our people to establish our own nation, our own society, our own heaven, our own future. This is what we mean by freedom, by uh, equality, and justice means uh, as you sow, so shall you reap. If you do wrong, you'll get wrong in return. And if you do right, you'll get right in return. When you're in your own nation, in your own land, you're in a position to get justice. But when you're in another man's country, in another man's land, under another man's flag, and under another man's uh, 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 government, and under another man's court system, you have to look to that other man for justice, and you'll never get it. And Negroes in this country probably are authorities on that. Yeah. To what extent does this formulation approach that expounded by Zionists? Uh, they, for example, many Zionists, Zionists maintain they could never expect uh, justice in the Tsarist courts and, and the, the courts found in other countries in Eastern Europe and so on. And they decided that it would be wise to establish a separate state in, in Israel. And, there, the, and, the, there... and all of the world powers got together, the white world powers, I should mm -hmm. say, got together and helped all of these white Jews to establish a separate state uh, in the heart of a dark-skinned people's territory. Uh, and if white people can get together and, and, and let other whites, help other whites, uh, to establish uh, an independent nation right in the midst of dark-skinned people, and then we see, we don't see where white people 
should be so much against the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's solution, not of setting up an independent dark nation in a white people's property, but he's asking uh, uh, the opportunity to set up an independent nation in our own, on our own continent. Let us leave America and go back home among our own people on our own land and set up our own independent society. But all he says is that this government, which made us slaves, should supply the transportation for us to get back home and give us all of the machinery and the tools necessary for us to till the soil and establish our own agricultural system to feed and clothe our people, our own economy, and in some way become an independent people among our own people on our own continent. This is intelligent. And Zionists should never criticize us. You say then that the United States is not the black man's country. Definitely American not. laws no, are no. not black men's laws. No. So, I, uh, American laws are not the black man's laws. Well, the, the uh, laws here in America were made white by white people for the benefit of white people. The Constitution was written by whites for the benefit of whites. It was never written for the benefit of blacks. And, and when you read the Constitution, I think in Article 1, se uh, Section Article 1, Section 2, or Section 1, Article 1, some one of the two, and it's in the Constitution. It says that uh, it classifies black people as three-fifths of a man. Three-fifths of a man, subhuman, less than a human being. It relegates us to the level of cattle, hogs, chickens, cows, a commodity that could be bought and sold at the will of the master. No, it was written by whites for the benefit of whites and to the detriment of blacks. And when a black man stands up talking about his constitutional rights, he's out of his mind. Now, Minister Malcolm, in our textbook, which the students have read, supposedly, there is a statement, which is a quotation from Essien and essentially that from uh, Lincoln, to the effect that uh, the nation of Islam does not have a great deal of support in the Negro community in this country by and large. And a recent national poll of American Negroes found that leaders and rank and file, according to their statistics, supported the Reverend Martin Luther King somewhere over 90 percent, whereas the support and favorable rating that they gave Minister Muhammad was less than 20 percent, and somewhere around 45 percent of them gave an unfavorable rating to Mr. Muhammad. What would your response be? in terms of Baldwin's statement that this is a growing thing and the kinds of evidence that we have that there isn't much to it. Well, uh, that, that statement I made just made concerning the Constitution is Article 1, Section 2 in the Constitution where it classifies us as chattel. Uh, Baldwin did point out that Mr. Muhammad has the only grassroots support and is the only one whose whole the following operates or functions on a mass vehicle. Uh, and I think Baldwin told Dr. Kenneth Clark that uh, Martin Luther King is at the end of his rope. Now, uh, concerning the uh, poll taken by Newsweek magazine, I think you said that this was the leaders who said that, uh, who went with King and against Mr. Muhammad around 90%. I just told you a little while ago, these leaders that they call leaders, this included Lena Horn, this included Dick Gregory, and this included comedians, comics, trumpet players, baseball players, Show me in the white community where a comedian is a white leader. Show me in the white community where a singer is a white leader, or a dancer or a trumpet player is a white leader. These aren't leaders. These are puppets and clowns that uh, have been set up over the white community and uh, over the black community by the white community and have been made celebrities and usually say exactly what uh, they know that the white man wants to hear. And it is an honor, actually, that they endorse Dr. Martin Luther King and uh, uh, were against the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's actually an honor. Now, when you say that they also, in this same Newsweek poll magazine, they, uh, I think the pollster said that he went into the Negro community and asked about the Muslims. And many Negroes whom he asked said, well, I never heard of the Muslims. Who are they? You know, this is the rank and file we're talking about. Oh, yeah. About. Now, yeah. when they got down to the rank and file, this was the answers that they got. Uh, this is equivalent to uh, the situation in Kenya during the Mau Mau uprising when many uh, frightened uh, whites in Kenya, Africa, would go among the Africans and ask them, what about the Mau Mau? And the African would say, I never heard of it. And the same white man who would ask the African this question and very naively believe what the African said, 
When he went to bed that night, he could lose his head. And usually the one who took his head was the same African who told him that afternoon he had never heard of the Mau Mau. Uh, except uh, in the Newsweek poll, they used Negro interviewers. You'll find that oftentimes Negroes are as much on guard uh, around Negro interviewers who usually represent the bourgeois uh, element of Negroes as they are on guard around whites. Uh, usually Negroes know that when this bourgeois Negro walks through the door, he is not doing something that he's initiated himself, but he's involved in something in which the white man is the absolute author of and has sent him to the Negro community for some information. And when they give that Negro some information, usually they give him the information that they want the white want him to take back to the white man, because that's who he's going to take it back to. Uh, our time is just about up, Minister Malcolm, and uh, perhaps you could summarize and conclude by giving us, in your opinion, or in the opinion of Mr. Elijah Muhammad, what would be the ideal solution to the racial problem in the United States today? Well, on Thursday, October the 3rd, the New York Tribune, in an editorial, pointed out in Boston, in an article called The Civil Rights Iceberg, they pointed out how Kennedy had realized that beneath the water, the civil rights uh, whole problem uh, was political suicide. Because in his own hometown, the head of the Board of Education, a woman named Mrs. Uh, Hicks, was running against the NAACP philosophy, and she swept aside all other opposition. The whole white community supported her in opposition to the NAACP's desire for integrated schools, integrated housing, and otherwise. So I say that to say this, that even the Jewish community, community which is supposed to be pro-liberal, went against the NAACP. Whites are against integration in practice, but they're for it in principle. So the only solution is separation. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says that this can be brought about simply by letting our people be exposed to the truth about ourselves, about the white man, about our history and our condition in this country. And once we are exposed to the complete truth as things about things as they actually exist in this country, the masses of black people will choose complete separation from this entire system, political system, economic system, social system, and whatever other aspect or description you, or, or uh, uh, adjective you want to attach to it. Let us go back home to our own people, live among our own kind, and solve our own problems ourselves. And if the white man doesn't want us to go back to our own people and live in our own country, then since we can't get along together in peace on this country with white people, let us separate part of this continent, migrate to that separate territory, let the government give us everything we need to establish our own independent economic system and society, and thereby we'll be able to solve our own problems ourselves and prove that we are human beings and a part of the human family and can do for ourselves what other humans have done for themselves. And then we'll be able to stop blaming the white man for what he has done and stop begging the white man to solve our problems. We'll be able to solve our problems ourselves. Thank you very much. That's it.